See, I, I thought, and maybe this is because I grew up with the BBC, you know, in, in Britain we have a long-standing journalistic tradition of balance. I thought we saw this long-haired, bearded guy get out of a car, and I thought, oh, he's going to be the guy to tell us all about the occult, uh, how it's a good thing for balance. You know, I thought, <laughs> if he's not going to tell us how great the occult is, I'm going to be really disappointed. I, I wanted to be sort of like, well, you know, the thing about being an occultist sex coven is just like, you know, all the sex is just great. There's loads of it. It's like with girls, with guys, just everybody always wants to fuck. It's brilliant. That, that's what I really wanted out of it. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if we just talked about my cats, you'd notice. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heathel will be unable to join us today, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. Today I learned that my high school yearbook is a movie, so I've got, <laughs> I've got a lot to put out there. <laughs> All right, and also joining us today is the host of Be Reasonable, the co-host of Skeptics with a K, the project director for the Good Thinking Society, and a guy who, it turns out, isn't really a Beatle. He just talks like one. Michael Marshall. Marsh, welcome back, sir. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be back. Uh, fun fact, I was actually going to be the fifth Beatle, but I was beaten to it by Pete Best. But other than that, yeah. I would have been in the band the entire way through. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, I, I feel like if, if you could be you or Pete Best, you nailed it. Uh, so. <laughs> well done, if Pete sir. Best could be Marsh or Pete <laughs> yes. Best. He's like, fuck, was that an option? <laughs> now I missed out on two things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? Uh, we watched Doorways to Danger, the 1990 educational film that explained that if you ever even checked your horoscopes once, you should pretty much start stockpiling babies to eat because you are <laughs> destined for hell. <laughs> I was so ready for this movie to tell us about the dangers of fortune cookies. They never got around to it, but basically that and the magic eight ball is all they missed. All right. So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved blood on the highway, but you wish it had been about the dangers of Mario Kart, you will love this movie. Watch out, it's a blue show. It's the floor is lava, the PSA. Yes. <laughs> All right, so now this is a product of the satanic panic, but I was always under the impression that that was a distinctly American phenomenon. This is a British movie. So, Marsh, did you guys go through this too, or was this just an American company trying to get you guys on board? No, so we did, and this is uh, so it's uh, it's strange because 1990, I was seven, so I was too young to remember this uh, all happening. But I have spoken to people who were involved in skepticism at the time, and uh, there was this big sort of uh, recovered memory, false memory type thing going on, and this idea that yeah, there was a satanic sweep through society, which I find really bizarre because I don't really see a lot of specifically religious behaviour here in the UK. So it just seems weird that we would have. Uh, it makes sense for you guys. You guys can have that. You've got the religion everywhere. It's suffused every. Every inch, every cell of your bodies has some sort of religious aspect to it. But here in the UK, we're meant to be a bit more reserved. So I'm astonished that this actually happened to us as well. Yeah, no, I found that really disturbing. There was, you know, like pre-Brexit, there was always this feeling in my mind that you guys were like the smart us. Yeah. And uh, this this is really helping to ding it right along with. No, uh, it's, it's just the accent. The accent covers a hell yeah. of a lot of ignorance. Right, right. No, exactly. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I want to say it had the best worst teaser image um, <laughs> because this film was on YouTube, um, which was handy. And I also did a little bit of looking around, a bit of Googling about the film to understand the context of it. And everywhere that I looked for the film, it had the same thing as it had on the uh, the YouTube sort of snapshot as what the film was about. And that was this really weird sort of apocalyptic kind of painting with some ghoulish looking children and a giant witch. And I thought, this is going to be a weird, incredible, <laughs> psychedelic run of a film. It's going to be spooky. It's going to be fucking weird. Nope, nope, none of that. That was just one painting that appears at one point in the film, and they led with that everywhere that I could see. So I was so disappointed by what this actually looked like all the way through. My my hopes were totally dashed. And spoiler alert, this movie has so little content, we will go visit that painter's house. <laughs> <laughs> we will, but we'll never speak to him. <laughs> no, we won't. We'll look at his sweet car, though, yeah. <laughs> all right, so I was going to go with, and this seemed like the no-brainer to me, 
best worst transitional graphics. Mm. All right. So you ever watch one of those, you know, the slideshows that the old guy put together on iMovie and he just used all of the transition wipes alphabetically? <laughs> like, apparently there was a 1980s version of that. There sure was. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't get all the way through the alphabet, did he, Noah? He stopped at C for cube wipe. I yeah. thought, I think we've struck gold. <laughs> Don't know why I need more than the cube white. All right. <laughs> I was going to go with best worst eyewitness testimony. <laughs> Look, I, I have no idea which person you're talking about right <laughs> no, now. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. We have seen a lot of Christian quote unquote documentaries and other kinds of crazy documentaries, but we have never had the one time me and my friend saw a person doing a thing which I now believe to be magic, but was not magic at the time, <laughs> as the sole survivor of witchcraft in this documentary film. <laughs> we will at one point get a Christian band talking to each other, not the people who were into witchcraft. We will get no. a Christian band talking about people they met who were into witchcraft as our eyewitness. Yes, yeah, we'll get bullshit hearsay. Yeah, exactly. It'll be a lie to the third power by the time we're done with it. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We've got a lot of idiocy exponents to work out here, and apparently, right now, all of our souls are in mortal peril because I did read my horoscope at one point in my life. So we're going <laughs> to do you guys the favor of keeping the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the paranoid schizophrenia that is... Doorways to Danger. Hey, Marsh, thanks for helping us out with the ads again this week. Yeah, no, no problem at all, fellas. So um, so this is the copy? Yeah, I mean, we personalized it a little bit. A little uh, bit. But yeah, you, you just go ahead. Okay, sure. Um, let's talk about the holidays. I know, I know, it's crazy early to talk about the holidays, but trust me, you don't want to go through another holiday season taking closed mouths photos while everyone else is grinning ear to ear, do you? Getting a photo-ready smile starts now, and it's easier than ever with clear aligners from Candid. And you can trust me because I'm British and we have terrible teeth. We don't actually have terrible teeth. Dental Health in the UK is actually really Marsh, pretty good. It's the Read copy. the copy, That's Marsh. The copy. Just the copy. You got to do, do the copy. Candid's aligners can help straighten your teeth faster than traditional wire braces. Treatment takes just six months on average, or as we call it, paternity leave. Is that an anti-paternity leave joke, Eli? You, they only paid for the minute, Marsh. When you question, they get a longer <sighs> ad. Candid ships your aligners directly to you. So there's no hassle of going to an orthodontist's office. And Candid costs 65% less than braces. Oh, I get it. The joke is that they make you pay for medical treatment. Is that, is that just, what, that's what just, you're doing? Just read the next part. Okay, okay. Braggy. And with each aligner purchased, Candid donates $25 to Smile Train, who brings safe, 100% free cleft lip and palate treatment to children all around the globe. And I'm absolutely not going to read that. Marsh, you said you were going to help you with the help. Help. Fine, fine. To treatment to children all around the globe. And then, then Eli has written, and a good thing too, because yuck, am I right? Yuck. There we go. So get your photo-ready smile by the holidays. Go to CandidCO.com slash awful and use the code awful to get $75 off. That's CandidCO.com slash awful. Code awful for $75 off. CandidCO.com slash awful. Code awful. Because if you're going to have crooked teeth, your mum should own all the swans. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello there, little Noah. My name is Pastor Bob. Hi, Pastor Bob. I want you to know that I have a rape whistle. So. Okay, fair, fair. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm here because your parents wanted me to talk to you about the dangers of Satanism. What's Satanism? Oh, it's a very evil thing that could get you killed. Oh, but, well, I guess I am sure won't do any Satanism then. I yeah, it, and it'll give you terrible superpowers. Okay, wait, what kind of superpowers? Oh, you'll be able to levitate objects with your mind, summon hellfire to consume your enemies, all the vile tools of the devil. All the vile tools of the devil? Oh, yeah, but there's more to it than just sorcery. There's more? Oh, that's right. There's a bevy of sin and debauchery, sex, nudity, wild orgies, just group masturbation. Okay, so how do you spell it again? S A. And that's not even to mention all the drugs they're going to try to ply you with. You know, maybe you should tell me what specific addresses I should be avoiding. No, but here's the worst part. Are you ready, little Noah? 
you'll be separated from God and you won't go to church. This is my literal origin story, isn't it? It is. It sure is. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with an opening crawl that apparently went to the Donald Trump School of Capitalization <laughs> <laughs> that informs us that all around the world there has been an increase in the practice of spiritism, fortune-telling, witchcraft, and Satanism. And the, the voiceover here reminds me of every single BBC educational program I ever had to watch as a kid. It just takes me right back to the classroom. There's a VHS and a TV being wheeled into the room. Yeah, right, the right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely amazing. What's hilarious is at this point in, in the thing I wrote in my notes, this video is going to warn us about the dangers of Ouija boards. I thought I was being facetious. Right. <laughs> a good 70% of this movie is devoted to the dangers of Ouija boards. I thought I was fucking with you when I wrote that. I was not. You were not. And then we get what I believe may be the greatest opening sequence in human history. Oh, I love this so much. I wasn't expecting when I was watching a film warning about the dangers of Ouija boards uh, to have a quasi Bowie-esque intro song, but I was there for it. I, I've, I've had this tune in my head since I watched it. Yes! It, starts with, it, it starts with going, uh, do you know your birth sign? Do you follow the stars? It's, it's yes. unbelievable. It's so good. The rhymes in it are so amazing. <laughs> they really are. The rhymes are amazing. The lyrics are amazing. And I will say, Marsh, you singing that first line is the only evidence of this song left on the internet. It has yes. been thrown out <laughs> from I time. I this is a real song, but I cannot find anything mm -hmm. of this. I wrote all the words out and everything to try oh, and uh, track yes. any nope. of it down. I was trying to find it because I wanted to see the lyrics just so I could have them to fuck with at this point, and I could not find it. No, it no, lived I just, and died. I just transcribed it. I was enjoying it so much, I, I kept pausing <laughs> and transcribing it. Because the last, the last line of it as well, obviously this film is called Doorways to Danger. The last line of the song is, uh, Ouija boards and tarot cards are more than harmless fun. They're the doorway that will lead you to distraction. It's like distraction. Say danger. It's the name of the, did you not know the name of the film when you wrote the song? <laughs> <laughs> but but even worse, it's because distraction rhymes with harmless fun. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so it's just nice to know that when Heartbeat all murder suicided themselves in the year 1995, <laughs> they took the last remaining evidence of this song with them. Oh, and, and OK, so we're listening to that amazing song. And then what we're watching is people at a shitty local fair in near total darkness. Right. That's yep. what the video is. No reason that is ever explained, except, I guess, Satanism really happens at the fucking tilt a whirl. <laughs> and as this is happening, there's like Ouija boards and tarot cards flying by and 1990s in camera effects quality. <laughs> oh, yeah. And one of them's runes as well. But runes sort of descends from the top of the screen really quickly. And I had to pause it to figure out what it actually even was, which I feel isn't a great warning if they're trying <laughs> yeah. to warn about the danger runes. <laughs> So what was that? Well, also, Zenner cards? Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the dangers of Zenner cards. Um, and I love, too, at the, the last thing they show is a bunch of magazines about astrology, which means you know that they sat there for like an hour and a half going like, if we just show stars, they won't know what we're talking about, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we get the title screen, which says, I love this so fucking much, doorways to danger, colon. The video, <laughs> you know, as opposed to the stage play that it's based on. I genuinely think it was to distinguish it from Doorways to Danger, the Betamax, because we're in a right, <laughs> right at the right kind of era. Yes. Yeah. OK. And also now I didn't realize this was British quite yet. And I know that you guys do the weird red triangle thing with your signs or whatever. But yeah. They were going for danger sign. They landed on yield sign. Isn't there one? Because like, that's the one you use for like. You know, T-junction coming up too, right? That's not yeah, danger. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's like you've got to, you've got to stop to make sure no one's coming. That's about as far as it gets. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. more, it's always, always to information rather than danger. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a way to... better description of this movie, to be fair. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. There weren't a lot of doorways to information in it either. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to meet our first and who turns out to be, I guess, our most credible talking head, right? Mm. 
this is Christian minister and author on the. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, I'll, I'll introduce him the way this movie introduces him. Kevin Logan, author and occult troubleshooter. Yeah, yeah, very, very valid job title. His job title is basically uh, what? What are the symptoms? Yeah, sounds like demons. Sounds like yeah. demons to me. <laughs> and. So this is the only quote unquote expert in the movie that I was able to Google and it's the darkest, darkest Google timeline because you Google him and then, and then they're like, oh, there's a million Kevin Logan's more important than this guy. Then you put in Kevin Logan Lancashire or however you pronounce that word in Britain. Um, and it turns out the only article about him is, so there's this vicar that nobody likes. He's retiring. <laughs> I saw and, and, that. And I found that in as the well. article. Yeah, in the article, he's just like, fucking gays, am I right? And they're like, again, just a reminder, this guy's retiring. You can probably come back to church or not. Who cares? It's England. No I, I pressure. love how he gets introduced as well, because he we open with like, just before he appears, we see a, a shot of a book called Paganism and the Occult, and then his face appears in the front cover, and yes. I wrote, ah, it's a haunted book. Ah. <laughs> But no, that was their fantastic transition skill coming in, <laughs> making an early appearance. And yeah, and so he he flies out of the book and starts explaining to us that horoscopes are a gateway drug to Satanism, right? Well, they're a gateway drug to zombieism, right? And he's like, <laughs> oh, you know, they start with horoscopes and then they, real quote, Lose the ability to be people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Your personality deteriorates, he says. And it's great because he says it in the most flat and boring voice of anybody I've ever heard. Yes. Is that all you've been there, haven't you, mate? You've been through this. <laughs> well, and then, curiously enough, he ends his warning by saying that if you get into Ouija boards and horoscopes, you'll lose your ability to make choices. Right? And I'm like, yeah, well, that's. Let's make kids more Christian so they'll have a greater array of ch choices. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, we, we need, we, you can't do this stuff. You'll lose your ability to make choices because we at the church are all about kids making choices. We want young people to be pro-choice. Hang on. Can we rewind a second? <laughs> yeah. I just heard it. Just, just caught up I'd like myself, to retire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So we move away from him because the movie itself is bored by this guy. <laughs> and then we check in. With Heartbeat. Heartbeat! One of the UK's most popular Christian music pop groups. Oh, <laughs> I imagine end. that is a fiercely competitive category. <laughs> in that I just learned about that category when watching this film. Yeah, right. <laughs> and look, there it's too long to make jokes about, but when I die and go to heaven, I will get to just make jokes about the Heartbeat interview that i found online when i googled <laughs> oh, really? heartbeat christian ben which oh. is just the lead singer very 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 much trying to do a behind the music thing he's like yeah it wasn't always easy people would be like sing how great is our shepherd and we would have to sing it but some people thought we were just a rock band but we're not <laughs> we uh i mean i think we're a rock band so that's a person let's drink some milky tea and gossip uh, okay, oh, so do. we do see them drink the the weakest tea I have ever seen in my life. It's offensive to me as a British person to see <laughs> how they take their tea. It's disgusting <laughs> to me. And also, can we can we at least mention that they are the ugliest group of humans ever captured on video? Yeah, I feel like ugly doesn't capture it. They are the craziest group of humans like if you told me god hit the character randomizer button a bunch of times it was like there that's heartbeat big shoulders tiny eyes poofy hair Good. and I, I love as well there's like no, well i think there's eight of them in the band and they all sort of walk in in a really rehearsed and super awkward way but then the ninth member of the band runs in after them and he's running with his hands in his pockets and i've never seen anybody run with their hands completely in the pockets i think he'd read online that having your hands in the pocket in your pockets makes you look casual on camera right he, 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 he must have been sort of spending time thinking about that everyone walked in without him and he's like, oh well I, I i guess i better run to catch up this will be good yeah it's amazing and we should probably mention the entire reason for heartbeat being in this movie is so not to talk about their music not to talk about the careers not even to talk about jesus it's for them to talk to each other on camera about one time a girl 
had a seance in her house for fun, but her television exploded and her nightmares came true. Yes. All right. Yes. They're chatting about all the people that they've freed from the occult with their Christian music, which sounds like the greatest terrible cartoon ever. Like, right? Like their <laughs> Scooby-Doo and the one girl. And they're apparently talking about mutual memories, right? They're not telling mm. each other. But they're going like, you remember that time that? And the one that they open on. I had to go get my wife for this. And I'm like, just 11 seconds is all you need to watch of this movie. And the one girl goes, you remember that one girl who had a seance and then her television exploded and things flew around her room and she became a precog from Minority Report? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's amazing. I also love, and it's a minor detail, but she says, uh, you remember that girl up north who did that? And it's yes. like every, t every time she mentions anyone to add that kind of credibility, they add like, oh, and there was a, there was an unnamed teacher who was down south who was teaching yes. the kids. Are yes. remember, there was that survey of kids in the north. Why is this lady's information all geographically bound? <laughs> Well, it's like, that's why she, it, it's the same way that she doesn't use a number that ends in five or zero for her percentage, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, they, they go into detail talking about things that they already know. And, and what the, like, if you back away from this conversation for a second, what you're actually listening to is people saying, remember when we met that mentally ill person and took their delusions mm. seriously? Yeah, oh, yeah. That is, yeah. That is the scariest case scenario. I chose the lighter timeline, which is they could find zero people who had these experiences and Heartbeat was sitting in the room for some reason and they were like, we could just lie. Do you want us to just lie <laughs> back and forth? We could do that weird conversation top of lie thing that Christians do. Oh, that would make sense because there's three of them in this conversation. There's two women and a fella. And the fella in the entire conversation says nothing other than, mm, and yeah, and <laughs> yeah, up north, yeah. And I think it's a bit like he's just walked up to this conversation at a dinner party and he doesn't know how to join in. So he's trying to sort of get into the conversation, but it's been going on without him for a while. Oh God, that's me mingling. Yes. Every fucking, every platinum night we've ever had. Yep. And, and they're talking about like, they're like, I'm just terrified by how, how many Christians read their horoscope for, for all the wrong reasons, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lovely bit as well where um, the, the one of the ladies who's Scottish, she says uh, about how all these uh, you know Christians are all uh, doing uh, Ouija boards rather than reading the Bible, and then she says, "Because you know it's subtle, isn't it? The occult, it's subtle." And it's like, "Yeah, it's yeah. it's a pain when your TV subtly explodes, <laughs> yes, <and you> subtly <laughs> fly around the room." <laughs> Now, I don't live like, in California. They're flying around, but they're not being like ostentatious yes, about it. You know, right, they're right. Discreet. They're staying low to the ground and shit. <laughs> this is where she gives us her fake statistic, which is yes. that 87% of teenagers had dabbled in the occult. Yes. <laughs> By which she means the Ouija board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. right. But still, if 87% of British kids play the Ouija board, as she says, at lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. British schools are weird, and I want to know what that was like. All right, young Marshall, welcome to your first day at the school of Throngbottoms Academy. Oh, I'm so excited to learn. That's right. Are you eager to learn maths, which is which is plural for some reason? I'm not sure. Well, it, it is plural because there isn't just one number, is there, Headmaster? Not in England, there's not. Anyway, uh, from there you'll have... A cricket, probably, and then for lunch, you'll summon the dead. Summon the dead, sir? Oh, yes, all the children do it, asking them questions, generally reaching through to the other side like you do. You know, this is actually far better experience than I had at school, so, um, yeah, let, let, let's talk some dead people. Radio, I'm off to go kill Severus Snape. Spot on fucking accent. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> All right, and then we meet we meet Eddie Voss, who is a lecturer and spiritual advisor. Just so you know, everyone on this call could technically claim that title too. <laughs> <laughs> and Eddie Voss looks like Margaret Thatcher as a drag king. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, Eddie Voss. He he came. He's uh, what you get if you uh, take all the hair that you pull off a brush after you've brushed a very ginger cat, and then sort of like fold it all up. <laughs> And then that's, that's him. Br br bring that to life. Through the <laughs> yes. <you> get Eddie <laughs> oh, that's deep. All that's right. Deep and great. So he's going to share, I think, the sc scariest story that we're going to hear in this, right? So yeah. 
once upon a time, he was teaching R.I., I, I'm guessing religious indoctrination. <laughs> I don't know. British thing. It's, it's really just instruction is, a, is what they have. It, you don't teach R.I. anymore. You teach R.E. in the U.K. But for a while, it was R.I. before we realized that you couldn't just instruct children to religion because that did sound like indoctrination. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Next generation will be R.S., religious suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. R.N., religious nonchalance. <laughs> All right. So but in R.I. class, the, the higher ups wanted him to talk about the occult. And he says, only if I can be supervised by other people in this, like other adults, like like as though this was a condition of his probation or something. I didn't he didn't explain why. Look, I'm used to giving that speech and I thought he handled it tastefully. No, I thought he handled it very tastefully. <laughs> I mean, all I thought was I, I'd be really happy for that caveat to apply to all RE lessons if we can <laughs> yeah. caveat whenever there's an RE lesson uh, going on. Also, when he says it, we cut to uh, a lot of kids, like footage of a lot of kids at school, and they all look super bored and super annoyed. So I can only assume this is footage actually live from his class at that time <laughs> of the kids listening to Eddie Vass. Yeah, so he tells us the story about how he taught all the kids about occultism and how reading their horoscopes would make demons live inside of them. And that class ends. After his class, a mentally ill young girl had a breakdown or an epileptic had a seizure or something. And so he exercised the demons from her. Yeah, yeah. whatever was happening to this child was medical. But don't worry, he took her outside and yelled, Jesus is Lord at her. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally the story he tells in the video. He describes what sounds to me like an epileptic fucking seizure. And he says, yeah. so I drug her outside and I'm like, hmm, that's bad already. And don't then he that. yelled, no. Jesus at her. But don't worry, she was fine after that. I guess he successfully sent the legions of demons plaguing her into some feral hogs or something. <laughs> But we know he's the hero because this entire story is being played out in a cartoon yeah, over his yes. shoulder, which when the cartoon guy first appeared, I thought, oh my God, it's a demon. I was really getting into the spirit <laughs> of, uh, of, of, of this whole moment. But no, this is a cartoon illustrating his heroics. And then we see a cartoon of the lady that he describes as a demented lady. Um, yes, and the, the style of the cartoon. Um, this is going to mean nothing to you guys, but for our UK listeners, uh, the style of the, the cartoon is exactly the same as the cartoon introduction to the uh, children's TV show Grange Hill, which is a very famous intro of like a comic book of like a school. And so the very next frame of Eddie driving this demon out of this lady, uh, midway through the frame, a sausage appears on a fork in that frame and you hear... Ba -da -ba -bum. It means nothing to you, but trust no, me, UK no, listeners so are getting British, that all the way. British it's listeners are love. See, for, uh, for me, I, I thought it was impressive that they got the guy who did all the CPR posters here in the United States <laughs> after, after his big hit. You know, I did both the CPR and Are You Choking posters. So if you've got any <laughs> Christian liars who I can illustrate. <laughs> so, but wait, this story gets so much better. So she gets over her epileptic seizure or demonic convulsions. You decide. <laughs> and he says, hey, you know, it's, have you been, you know, having unprotected demon sex or like what? How, how did you get the demons? And so the girl told him that she had a, a part time job as a hairdresser. But it turns out that the hairdresser she was working for was also a spiritual medium. Oh, which means that the real story here is. You told me that this harmless thing that I had done would literally allow demons to hijack my soul and I freak the fuck out because I'm impressionable and young and you shouldn't be allowed to talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. But the way he ends this story is bizarre. He goes, she was possessed because she worked for a hairdresser and this afternoon it sparked. End of sentence. I don't know what <laughs> it, there was a crossfade. I don't know. No idea why he thinks punctuation goes at that point i'm <laughs> criticizing how he wrote and spoke in that situation still i want to go to that hairdresser's place and see what that work environment's like right oh dearie thank you so much for helping me out at the salon oh no problem at all miss puff and fuffer oh call me broom hilda darling okay broom hilda now would you be a dear and hand me those scissors the these scissors here Mm-hmm. And that wee cloth doll, darling. Uh, this one. That's it, that's it. And finally, the long pin with the bloody tip. Uh, Broomhilda, how does all of this help with hair stuff? 
Oh, it does, my dear. It's the secret of why all British women either have Peter Pan's haircut or like a lady from the far side. Yeah, you're not planning to come to QD this year, are you, Eli? Hoping they forget this joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm pretty sure that this movie just endorsed the psychological abuse of children in the name of protecting them from spiritual abuse. So I need a break for some deep breathing. Probably a good <laughs> moment to take a break for our word from this week's second sponsor. Oh, hey, Noah, what, what are you drinking? Oh, this it's liquid death. So you're also drinking the mango nectar now, are you? I'm telling you, you and Eli are going to like lose a foot by Christmas. No, 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 no. Liquid death. It's it's. Actually, just really good water. It comes from the mountains. It's rich with natural electrolytes and minerals. There's nothing like a freezing cold can of water to murder your thirst. Wait, did you say a can of water? Isn't that wasteful? Dude, aluminum cans are infinitely recyclable. Fact, of all the aluminum produced since 1888, yes, over 100 years ago, 75% of it is still in current use. Plastic is not actually recyclable anymore. Most recycling plants send plastic straight to a landfill because it costs too much to recycle, and there's nobody who will buy the recycled plastic now that China will no longer take boatloads of it. Aluminum and metal are the only materials that are actually profitable to recycle. Environmental economists are actually saying it's now better for the earth if you just throw your plastic in the garbage so it goes straight to a landfill instead of doubling the trucking distance required to ship it to a recycling plant and then have it shipped again to a landfill. Huh. Well, I'll be... Plus, Liquid Death donates five cents from every can sold to help clean up plastics pollution and bring clean drinking water to those in need. Well, that's nice of them. But Liquid Death is only available in a handful of stores, so you have to order it online. Just go to liquiddeath.com slash awful. They're offering listeners an exclusive deal to get $2 off every case. That's liquiddeath.com slash awful. Or better yet, you can click the option to literally sell your soul on their website in exchange for a free case. But is that real? Yeah, you actually sign a real soul contract that's legally binding for eternity. Liquid death. Science shit for Noah, upsetting religious people for the rest of us. You can keep that catchphrase, liquid death. That's on us. I feel like they're going to give it back. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And now it's time for us to meet David Stilwell, who they identify as ex-witch and coven member. I believe this is British. I believe that makes him a left witch. Yeah, and the first spell he cast was to never appear on Google. Let me fucking tell you. <laughs> uh, I mean, David, the way he gives this interview, he looks like he's been forced to do this interview, this video, is a, a sort of digital form of Megan's Law. He's got a very <laughs> look about him. Yeah, I said he looks like the first guy to get fired for fucking bagels in world history. It's <laughs> like, all right. I can't imagine he'd be the first. But yeah, so he we, we meet him. He goes, well, you know, I was messing around with Ouija boards. And as he's saying this, they show what I believe is the deck for Scrabble Slam. It is not a Ouija board. It is not a board. It's a bunch of cards with letters mm -hmm. on them that it shows. It's like, God damn it, we paid for all this B-roll. We're going to use all this B-roll. <laughs> right. But he tells us that his gateway was a girl... Gave him a book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And if any of us struggle to imagine what that would be like, the video recreates that transaction yes, for us. Yes, we see a book being handed to a person. <laughs> but yeah, so he got a book about witchcraft, kind of a DIY guide. And so he got really into that. And then the narrator cuts in to say, uh, what kind of things attract young people these days? Yeah, and if a religious person ever asks you that, do not answer. If it's a priest who's asking you that, do not give them that information. <laughs> what kind of ice cream do the kids like? <laughs> Candy bars. So we get books, videos. Books as and to videos is the yeah, answer. Yeah. Damn those young people and their book obsession. <laughs> and also... Dungeons and Dragons. Well, yes, right. That'll <laughs> and, fuck you right up. <laughs> and they're doing, they've got scary B-roll of like the dragon on the front of the Dungeons and Dragons box here. And he's trying to justify the Dungeons and Dragons thing. He's like, oh yeah, pretty much anything with witches, wizards, 
Dungeons, Dungeons you know, the dragons. usual. Dragons, <laughs> yes. I, I'm besides, it's all evil. <laughs> also, hey, how about a little shout out to the art for Dungeons and Dragons during this time? It was the fucking worst. It was like, I knew high schoolers who drew shit in their notebooks way better than the covers of these books I'm looking at. <laughs> I, it was the first time I've ever seen the polyhedral dice pop scare, but yes, they <laughs> open the fucking books and there's just like a dun dun dun. Yeah. So yes, anything with rich witches or dragons in it'll leave you sucking on Satan's red cock. And then the narrator <laughs> cuts in to go, but what about Halloween? That's got witches and dragons and shit, doesn't it? And his answer is like, oh yeah, big, big satanic holiday. Fucking huge. I mean, underneath Halloween is human sacrifice and murder and shit. Yeah, right. No, it's the highest satanic festival of the year, you see. Yeah, yeah. Although he does say, uh, but but people think it's all about just trick or treat and uh, dunking for apples, bobbing for apples, and he says it like bobbing for apples is sinister. And uh, do you do bobbing for apples in America? Yes, or is yeah, that a British uh, Halloween thing. Yeah. It's the least sinister thing <laughs> imaginable. But he's, he's trying to make a scare out of it. Amazing. In my experience, bobbing for apples is just being bad at eating for the first time in your life and then almost drowning. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. What it is is slowly drinking apple water. That, that's all. <laughs> yeah, bobbing for apples right, right. Is. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and is, I'm sorry, is it just maybe this is an accent thing or whatever? It sounded to me like he was saying trick in treat. Is that like what British people say? Or did this guy have a Heath dad? <laughs> oh, OK. No. So so this is uh, it is his accent. He's saying trick or treat. But the way he's saying it, his accent sounds to me like he's saying trickle treat, which is a very different thing. <laughs> it's a totally different activity. But but also a gateway to Satan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now the movie is going to sit back and recount all the people we've heard from so far in case that nine minutes really lets you <laughs> stretch to your max mentally or something. Yeah, and, and it's very much kind of like, here's all the people we've heard from so far and they take it all seriously, so either we should also take it seriously or they're they're wrong. Yeah. It's the first <laughs> of those. The, it's the first, people honestly. telling us stories about exploding TVs and nightmares <laughs> coming through who are wrong. It's one or the other. <laughs> oh, but now it's time for my personal favorite part of the film. <laughs> the one sentence tell me the major truths of the universe in an old construction site <laughs> lightning <laughs> round. This is amazing. This is so good and so weird. It's so <laughs> weird. I have no fucking idea what this was supposed to be, but like, honestly, isn't it the perfect metaphor for Christianity that they have an uneducated person trying to answer the most complicated questions of philosophy in 1.8 seconds or less? Yeah, yep. yeah, while, while climbing on a bulldozer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Four sips Molly Ringwald is going to solve all the questions of the universe for us in a sentence or less. Except, well, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. Most no, of them no. will be a sentence or less. Yeah, right, right. And also, it's just so that you know that she's the one answering the questions, they've... <laughs> They've stapled a large mystery brick from Mario to her left boob. They have. They have. And I don't know why she's wearing a massive question mark. I want to know. I want to hear. I want to be there for the decision making process. The day the director decided to have her wear a massive question mark because she's answering the questions, not even asking the yes, questions. Right. She's answering the questions. Or oh, maybe it's just to distract from the fact that she's crawling around a backhoe like a stripper while she's doing this. <laughs> All right. So, yes. Yeah, so let's get to the questions. Okay. Question one, where did you come from? To which she says, well, I don't believe that I just crawled out of a river or something. And I just want to say her looks say otherwise. Just throw them out there. <laughs> well, it's not just her looks. When we get introduced to her, she's standing pensively next to a river. And I say, Andrea, all the evidence is there. Don't lie to us. <laughs> but seriously, though, is that how she thinks evolution works? That like, she personally was once a fish. <laughs> I can see how you would doubt it. And I love that her answer. So she says, yeah, uh, I don't believe that we crawled out a river and gradually evolved. There's a really hard cut. And then she says, I think it's more credible to say that I was created by someone and there's a really hard cut and we look somewhere else. And it's like Andrea couldn't talk coherently for 10 seconds yes. without needing two <laughs> heavy cuts. <laughs> All right, but that's not going to slow him down. Here's the next question. What am I? Answer in two words or less. <laughs> <laughs> While standing in the door frame of the digger. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that, and that's the weirdest fucking thing is that every time they cut back to her, she's going to be on this same backhoe. But 
in a different position. <laughs> Right? Like, eventually she's going to just be dangling upside down from it or something. Like monkey bars, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the Shatner episode of The Twilight Zone where there's a, 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 a pixie or a gremlin on the wing. And then she's yes, just like right. moving around <laughs> the, the mechanics of it. Yeah, but don't worry. She's a ghost in a meat suit. Oh, I'll okay. <laughs> one sentence answer. All right. Question. I, I have no idea where the... These questions get so goddamn esoteric. Question. <laughs> How does the past affect the future? Yeah. What? Where the think, fuck are we going? <laughs> I don't know what the point they're trying to make is. She says, I think the past does affect the present. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's how time works. That's how yes. causality works. <laughs> I don't know what we're establishing here. Hey, among Christians, that shit's controversial. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Yeah, causality, they're not great with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to... Here's, here's a question you should be able to knock off with one sentence. What is right and wrong? <laughs> and so she says this whole thing about like how I think, you know, deep down when you're doing a wrong thing. So her answer is literally whatever I think in the moment is right or wrong. Yeah. yeah. And it also crucially doesn't reference religion in any way. It's like, I think, you know, deep down, she's essentially saying, I think we all have some sort of innate sense of morality that's built within us and doesn't come from an external source is basically her answer here. Yeah, right. Except I'm sure the Christians are like, yep, the Holy Spirit, you got it. Yeah, yeah. And I really wanted to be answering this from like curled up in a little ball in the, <laughs> the, the bucket of the digger. Or yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging off of the tooth of it, like with a wedgie or something. Yeah. Um, all right. So now we got another question here for her. Is death the end? No. Next question. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> And then we finally give her an opportunity to really live in an answer and, and, and answer it thoroughly. The question is, and I can see why at this point in the conversation you would want to ask this girl this. The question is, what is reality? <laughs> and I love this because one of the things she says is, uh, if I thought that reality was just what I want for my life, I'd be quite depressed. I say, like, yeah, Andrea, that's because the only thing you seem to want is to find innovative ways to sit on a bulldozer. <laughs> that's not a meaningful life pursuit. And we should point out that she has had a one sentence answer to everything except for this question, which is 14 times longer and somehow less meaningful. Yes. <laughs> Oh, my God, because she keeps saying, like, yeah, yeah, if I thought reality was just my ambitions, I'd well, yeah, you'd be wrong if you thought that. Um, But then she lands on reality. This is her definition, is to know God and understand his purpose for our lives. And I'm like, like, even if Christians were right about everything, you would still be wrong on that definition, right? <laughs> <laughs> that Okay. And then a filthy hippie shows up in a ridiculous toy car. <laughs> okay. Here's what I thought was happening. I thought Jesus drove up in his car to take her away. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I thought, and maybe this is because I grew up with the BBC, you know, in, in Britain we have a long-standing journalistic tradition of balance. I thought we saw this long-haired, bearded guy get out of a car, and I thought, oh, he's going to be the guy to tell us all about the occult, uh, how it's a good thing for balance. You know, I thought, <laughs> if he's not going to tell us how great the occult is, I'm going to be really disappointed. I, I wanted to be sort of like... Well, you know, the thing about being an occultist sex coven is just like, you know, all the sex is just great. There's loads of it. It's like with girls, with guys, just everybody always wants to fuck. It's brilliant. That, that's what I really wanted out of it. No, well, yeah, no, that would have been better than what we got. Yeah. So this is Rodney Matthews. His work can be seen in album covers and calendars all over the yes. world. Yeah, yeah. Now you're probably wondering if this artist is legit, but don't worry, he's been allowed onto DVD covers. <laughs> <laughs> and calendars. Yeah, he's he's a real big player in the in the calendar art world. He's a he's a real big name in that world. <laughs> he's their Jeff Koons. Yeah, no, like this is this motherfucker's a January through March kind of artist. I don't <laughs> stick his ass back there in November or anything. Yeah. And and also what if he was the greatest calendar artist in all of history, why what the fuck would that make him an expert on for this movie, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And it, it's lovely as well because we see Rodney get out of his car, and it's not a bad little car. Uh, but then he enters, he, he walks into a stone shack where he lives, and the voiceover says he lives in North Wales. And I was like, well, that's superfluous. We've got eyes; we can see he lives in North Wales. He's in a stone shack. <laughs> yeah, either he lives in Stonehenge or he lives in North Wales. We get it, movie. We get it. 
And then, okay, and then we break down one of his paintings because apparently his girlfriend wouldn't let him use one of her poems. Oh, my God. This is the trivial bullshit that the Christians in my high school drew on the inside of their trapper keeper. Okay, I Oh, this is so much worse. And and he explains it to us. It's like the shitty yes. short film your friend made. And then he stops it halfway through to be like, you get it? Because the girls that. Yes, I get it. I get it. You <laughs> have no subtlety. Although God is being attacked by four sperm. And that is a fun thing. To that's watch. the that's yes. the high point of the fucking uh, picture. Yes, it is. There's, there's loads of just weird details. You've got you got at the top. You've got like uh, the, the holy angels surrounded by fire. Fine. Below that, you've got what looks to be Darth Vader dressed as a cheerleader, <laughs> yes. which is Satan. Uh, and he's got a backing crew of all the falling angel, fallen angels. And then we've got the evil spirits who apparently are xenomorphs from the film Aliens. Yeah, they're, well, they're they're xenomorph spirits. genies. Yes, yeah. exactly. And then right next to that, we've got what I'm pretty certain is the guitarist from Def Leppard, <laughs> who apparently is representing normal people. It's amazing. There's a there's a black knight with a stripy black and yellow skirt who's got a pet griffin and we're never told what that's about. It's brilliant. <laughs> well, and then yeah, so here's the here's how subtle he is. They're breaking down a painting for us where the evils of rock and roll music are depicted by a rock and roll guy playing guitar with a demon xenomorph hovering above him. <laughs> so yeah, that's that that represents the demon that hovers over us when we play guitar. Um, and then they end it with like, but don't worry about all these demons. Jesus took care of that. Y'all remember Jesus? Yeah, and, and I'm so sad that we never even hear Rodney speak at any point. I'm really no. sad about it. We, we've gone into his house. We've poked around his belongings. <laughs> it's the least we could do. <laughs> he went to the bottom of the lane and drove back up in his car for the for the intro. For <laughs> yeah, <that>. right. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, pay his petrol or something. Come on. <laughs> so, and okay. And then we're going to open up the next scene with a very clear statement that buying two songs about the dangers of Ouija boards would have just been ostentatious. We're literally <laughs> going to get the same song from the beginning of the movie again. We are. That is true. And OK, so now we're going to either meet Carolyn Williams or the duck that killed Carolyn Williams, hollowed her out and climbed inside to animate her from within. Mm-hmm. That's actually how Untitled Goose Game ends. I, I apologize if I just ruined it. Whoa, yeah, sorry. man! Spoiler. I mean, a, a quick question: Is is Carolyn Australian? I couldn't. She sort of had a half Australian accent, and all I can think is like Neighbours, the Australian soap opera, was massive in the UK in the eighties, and I think she's just all of the eighties Neighbours characters rolled into <laughs> one human being. Sure. <laughs> and speaking of the guy who had to drive to the end of the lane to come back up in his car. They, we we meet her, we meet Carol, and she's walking up to her house with an umbrella because it's England, you know, it's raining and shitty. Um, <laughs> and she keeps glancing up at the porch like she's nervous that we're there, like she thinks that we're going to try to collect money from her or something. And, but but one way or the other, either they sent this poor girl out in the fucking rain to get this shot, right, this arriving home shot, or they literally just showed up on her porch and she wasn't expecting them to be there, which I actually think is more likely given what we know. So, all right. But Carolyn is here to, like her qualification, according to the little blurb at the bottom of the fucking screen is recalls an incident from her school days. Yep. And you know what? I'm not even sure she does. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't go so far as to call this an incident. No. <laughs> No, it's not. Her documentary content making story is one time I walked into a classroom and some girls were doing Bloody Mary, but the British version. And then I was like, "Uh -uh," and then I left. I'm in the movie. This story made it into the movie. (laughs) Yes. Yes. She okay. So she says she walked in on a room full of people who were reading the Lord's Prayer backwards, which means, among other things, she immediately recognized the Lord's prayer backwards. That's fucking weird. <laughs> right? I think I feel like she just heard weird like she walked in on the like the Russian exchange students or something and shit herself. That's demonic or something like that. <laughs> and that's the whole story. She walked in on those kids and said fuck that and left. It's the story about that time nothing happened to her. Yeah, yep. see, I I have a theory about Carolyn that we'll come to later that I ex- I, I think explains what she walked into in the bathroom, um, but I'm not going to spoil it. But I've got a theory, a working theory as to what her life's been all about ever since then. 
All right. All right. I, I, I love the tease. All right. So <laughs> and then they're literally going to tell us about the dangers of Ouija boards some more because they don't want me to be able to be hyperbolic anymore. <laughs> nope. They tell you that Ouija boards are very dangerous because you're not actually talking to the dead. What you're talking to is demons. <laughs> he was he started off so good. He starts <laughs> out with now you can't actually talk to dead people with a Ouija board. I'm like, very good, David Stillwell. Very good. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. But if that were true, I, I feel really bad for the demon who gets stuck with that job. Right? <laughs> Oh, hi there. You must be Gormak the Demonic. Yep, that's me. Well, you know, welcome to your first day in the Lower Hells. Uh, we're all super glad to have you here. Yeah, I'm really excited to, you know, damn some souls. Ah, that's exactly the spirit. So, um, so here's your, uh, here's your workstation. All right, this is a, uh, it's a Ouija board. That's right, the, uh, the main communicado, if you will. All right, so what do I do with this? Oh, don't worry at all. It's me dead easy. Messages will just come in. Oh, there we go. You see, you've got your first one already. Uh, spirit, are you there? I, I mean, yes. Okay, so you, you gotta, you gotta move the planchard. Right. Yes. There you go. You'll have a soul on your first day in no time at this rate. Does Billy like Nicole? Uh, who the fuck are Billy and Nicole? No idea. Well, I, then what do I say? I, I, I mean, yes, right? Yes seems demonic. Sorry, I just, I, I don't, I don't see how we're going to get souls this way. I mean, to be fair, the other side's plan involves giving babies cancer, so... Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yes, he likes Nicole. a boy. Okay, so now the narrator is going to cut in to point out all the much better movies we could be watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, we've got to go for the video nasty theme at this point. We see some yes. of the classics, Poltergeist 3, Spellbinder, Primeval, and then The Witches of Eastwick. The was Witches of fucking Eastwick was one of them. Well, uh, it gets worse because the, <laughs> the, what they will settle on as a, a guy is talking about a kid who like got descended into Satanism is Ghostbusters 2. Yep. They don't even blame the good Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> that super scary, video nasty Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> they literally show like children walking by the sign for Ghostbusters 2 as though to say, can you believe that when kids are watching? <laughs> and I, I want him to carry on even further. He's saying, you know, many films and videos today major on horror, sex, fantasy, the demonic. I want him to go even further and be like, there was this one film I saw where there was a haunted theme park and it turned out it was the Jack who was the ghost all along, and it's just a VHS of Scooby Doo. Right? That's a really long list. <laughs> also, like that was his list. They major in horror, sex, fantasy, and the demonic. What is the common thread in that list, <laughs> right? Like that seems like an SAT question or something. <laughs> horror, sex, and fantasy are to the demonic. Like wh what? But yeah, so then we meet Paul Benson, whose qualification to be in this movie seems to be talked to a young man recently. <laughs> I gave a guy an anxiety attack once. Because yes! <laughs> yes! He's just describing an anxiety attack. He's like, yeah, no, I cornered this teenager and I told him about how movies were filling him with demons and, you know, nobody knows anything right now, so he thought it was a demon and had an anxiety <laughs> attack and I was like, oh, a demon's choking you, which made it worse. Which made it worse. <laughs> yes! The end of my story. <laughs> He does say, you know, it's as if a hand grabbed this kid by the throat when I was trying to bring him to God. And I was like, was, was that your hand, Paul? You strangled the kid, didn't you? That's <laughs> yeah, what happened right. here. You strangled the kid, you've blamed Satan. Yeah, exactly. Afterwards, you were like, if anybody asked where the marks came from, it was the devil. <laughs> yeah, but again, the actual story is I met a kid who watched a lot of movies like The Omen. And then when I told him from a position of authority that those represented true, actual reality facts, he was real scared. So I said, gotcha, and made him into a Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. <laughs> All right. So now the the movie runs out of shit to say for a few minutes. <laughs> so yep, we are just going to list synonyms for magic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have this big, long scrolling list of evil looking things in what I can only describe as my be reasonable to do list. <laughs> 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 
This list gets so weird so quick, right? So at first it says like palmistry, Satanism, sorcery, witchcraft, fortune telling. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. I see the theme here. And then it says levitation. Yeah. Levitation. Yeah. Amazing. Spoiler alert. We will find out what they mean by levitation in the <gasps> second. Yes, half right. Of this it was movie. not the satanic magnets I hoped it would be. We will. We will. Uh, the list goes on for much longer as well. And I wrote in my notes is the rest of this film the glossary? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the end of it, these are the last few items evil spirits, magic, fantasy games, Halloween, omens, Wicca, hex. What? What has happened now? Hex, linking, linking rings, cups and balls. <laughs> vicious, okay, stop. Come on now. <laughs> they, they literally just like wrote everybody's word on the board and rolled with it. And they never like after this is over, they don't explain why we just read that long list of words, right? No, we just just it's done. List list over. Let's carry on with the film and never yes. think about the list again. Maybe they were just really bad at like subliminal messaging. They just read about the subliminal messaging. And thought, right, I, I've read about it. I've not read very much about it, but I've got a feel for it. How hard can it be? We'll we'll give it we a just, crack. We just sneak levitation in there, and no one will know. So yeah. All right. Well, clearly this movie needs a minute to decide what to fill the rest of its runtime with. So we're gonna pause for a quick break. But first, let me give Act Three the hard sell. Fucking Ouija boards? Are you fucking kidding me? You think the Sentinel at the gateway to the mortal hell is Milton fucking Bradley? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the rambling conclusion of Doorways to Danger. Hey, Noah, is Marsh here yet? Uh, no, not yet. Why? <sighs> I was hoping to get some dick pills from him. I'm sorry, dick pills? Yeah, he's basically a doctor, right? He does, like, science and stuff. No, no, no. Marsh isn't a doctor, and he definitely can't give you dick pills. Why don't you just try 4 hymscom 4 hymscom You saying I can buy dick pills online? Not just dick pills. 4 hymscom is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. I don't know. That sounds way too good to be true. It's not. 4 Hims offers prescription solutions backed by science. Answer a few questions, a doctor will review, and if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door. So no weird doctor's visits. That's right. And if you order now, our listeners can get started with the Hims Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today right now while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval. See website for full details and safety information. This would cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or pharmacy somewhere else. Go to 4 slash gam. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash gam. 4 com slash gam. Dick pills without the hassle. And also hair loss and skincare stuff. Oh, hey, guys. Marsh. Oh, yeah, great to see you. Oh, Eli, here's your dick pills. Thank you. Nice. Well, I mean, I, I guess we could write something original. It sounds hard. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I've got it. I know exactly how we open our satanic invocations. Oh, yeah? All right. So we say the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Wait for it. Backwards. So, so like, evil from us deliver, but temptation, that, that, that kind of thing. No, 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 man. Like, leave a morph to revile it to noit at permit. Dude, I love that. It sounds super evil, right? Uh, what? You, you don't like it, Marsh? Well, I mean, it's just, it all seems like really derivative, doesn't it? it how so? Well, you know, we've got our symbols, the cross, right? But it's upside down. Our What's messages it? are in song lyrics, but they're backwards. And now backwards. the invocation is going to be the Lord's Prayer, but backwards? Well, I mean, like, you know, it's kind of a theme that we're going with. I think. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, I guess. Wow, Marsh, you seem like really down. You want a snack? Sure, yeah, yeah. Here you go, buddy. Hmm. Oh, this is good. Who's this? It's Timmy. It's Andy Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, we were pretty sure Carolyn's amazing story about seeing kids say words was over. But no, no, there's more to it. We're going to rejoin her mid-story. It turns out 
things are about to get a lot less believable. Mm. After she ran away from the backwards Lord prayer, apparently she came across some other kids playing hover you above the ground with my mind. Did she go to school at fucking Hogwarts? <laughs> okay. But here's the best part. This is why we just saw the word levitation because what she's describing is 100% <laughs> light as a feather. Yes, stiff as it a board. is. It yes. is. Yes, it is. They just completely. cut the part where yes. she said that. Right. But I, I think there is some heavy subtext going on here because she says, you know, I was uh, walking through the field. Uh, there was a crowd. There was a girl lying down. There were six people either side of her. They all had their eyes closed. They were all concentrating. I thought, I've seen those videos online. Yeah. We've all seen those videos. See? Because I keep sending them to you. <laughs> And honestly, the language she uses just broke me because if you start seeing this as her story rather than I dabbled in the occult, it all becomes really clear because she says verbatim. So my friend Sarah bent down and it was me that was going to be bent over her. Yes. Right? We can all picture that so far. <laughs> yep. And she says, and everyone was around us and she did breathing and everything else. And then she just went and I started to really concentrate on her. And- <laughs> This is 100% a lesbian scene. This is absolutely what happened here. <laughs> she goes, yeah. I was looking, because like, yeah, they, so her and her friend apparently saw everybody playing light as a feather, stiff as a board, and they're like, all right, well, if all the other kids are levitating, I guess we'll jump off the cliff too. And it was her friend's turn to to levitate. She says she looked down and her friend's face started to distort, <laughs> which makes her own visage make a lot more sense to me now. <laughs> But luckily, just as her friend was going full demon faced, Carolyn started praying and then everyone got mad at her because they were just playing light as a feather, stiff as a board. And she started (laughs) calling upon Jesus's name. Yeah, but I have a very solid theory about what happened. So the whole thing about like I was the one who was supposed to stand over here. Here's what I think actually happened. I think they were playing light as a feather, stiff as a board. And I think she was the person at the head. Now, if you know about the physics of flight as a feather, stiff as a board, that is the one thing that doesn't have multiple people's fingers on it. So if you freak out because you're a Christian schoolgirl from England and drop your friend's head, (laughs) they'll mash the back of their head against the ground, distort their face because they've just whacked the back (laughs) of their head against the ground. Then you will pray to Jesus and ruin everyone's good time. This is about a girl who dropped her friend and assumed she had been possessed by a demon. <laughs> you're, to- you're totally right, because she says at the end, uh, my friend was acting kind of drunk. She couldn't stand up straight. Yep. She couldn't focus. Yep. I mean, I had a different reason for why she couldn't stand up straight and couldn't focus. <laughs> but you've come up with another another alternate uh, possibility, Eli. Mm-hmm. Isn't it amazing how many possibilities there are without resorting to demons? <laughs> also, we should point out that someone has... Um, or somebody's kid anyway, has storyboarded this whole thing with shitty watercolor paintings that are interspersed with her story. (laughs) (laughs) They're quite lovely. But yeah, she tells us at the end, this was a pivotal moment in her life. This moment when demons lifted her friend. (laughs) And you know that can't be easy for the demons involved, right? Uh, Gormac. Hey, Marsh. So we got your transfer requests, all 443 of them. And? And, um, yeah, we, we agree that maybe Ouija boards aren't the best use of your skill set. Oh, thanks, Satan. I, I was thinking maybe I could, like, you know, tempt a maiden or start a fire in a church, you know? Well, they're there. Love it. Absolutely love it. Keep those ideas coming for sure. Uh, but in the meantime, we're thinking you did something a bit more um, otherworldly demonic activity. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Excellent. So, um, right. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be lifting little girls. I'm sorry, lifting little girls? Yeah, you know, lifting little girls. Oh, oh, you mean like like in the exorcist, like above the bed, right before they vomit ectoplasm and stuff? Like, Right. Y- y- yes, but not quite that high. Okay, just I'll, I'll sort of hover them menacingly over the ground. Yeah, I mean... Technically, their friends will also be lifting them as well, but you're going to be making it easier by, like, two fingers or so. Okay, so just just lifting little girls, that not even... Yeah, seven, yeah. Seven. You know, if he doesn't want to do it, I'm happy to take over. Damn it, Jeffrey, get back in the pork box! Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
Wow, was that Jeffrey Epstein? <sighs> yeah. Ugh. Yeah, I know. All right, and now it's time for us to hear from Paul Heather, former astrologer. <laughs> Man who decided to switch from one form of attention to the other form of attention. Yes. Yeah, and Paul, he looks in this interview like he's being uh, interviewed on when he found out that his neighbors were swingers. That's the, <laughs> the sort of the tone of this interview. <laughs> it is. So he starts off with some great advice for the parents out there. If your teen seems depressed or suicidal, take away their Ouija board. It's probably mm -hmm. the Ouija board. Yep. Jesus, there's a lot of Ouija board talk in this movie. <laughs> but hey, Ouija boards aren't just fun and games. Sometimes people get nightmares. Also, they cause divorce. <laughs> 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 what I love about this interview as well, Paul managed to get maybe three sentences out and then the voiceover comes right in as if it's like boring. Come <laughs> yes. on, like, speed it up, Paul. Come on. I've never been more on this narrator's side, but yeah, he's <laughs> describing all the dangers of Ouija board. And then he says at the, at the end, he's like, but the worst part is it denies them access to God. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the worst. The worst part is it costs 12 bucks, dude. All right. <laughs> and he also tells us, by the way, that when he was into astrology, he didn't just dabble, right? When he sees a giant pile of bullshit, he doesn't just touch the edge. He sticks his hand all the way in Jurassic Park style. <laughs> and I love how he tells us how he freed himself from astrology. He's like, you know, but I thought about it. It's kind of bullshit. And I was like, good. And he was like, it's like worshiping the stars. And I was like, good. And he's like, and the planets. And I was like, good. And he was like, when you should worship the wizard that created those things. <laughs> um, this guy <laughs> tries for so an analogy ball. and stubs his toe. It's so goddamn bad. Yeah, I mean, I I love all of this interview. I love I love it absolutely all because you, you said that he said you know that uh, when he when he got, gets into something he doesn't do it lightly. You know, he, he said I really get into it, and at that point there is a glint in his eyes that made me think, oh, it's not your neighbours that are the swingers, right? That all makes <laughs> sense. That's now, and he's basically saying, yeah, when I get into something not real, something pretend. I don't pretend lightly. I go all out with my pretending and I pretend really, really hard. Anyway, I'm religious now. Yes, <laughs> right. And as he's talking about how he needed to interpret astrology as well, he said, I had to go to the library to get some books about it. And we see footage of him looking at uh, magazines. And the magazines, first of all, they're illustrated with stills from the video to Aha's Take On Me. <laughs> uh, that is the animation style, in, uh, the, the yep. illustration style in this video. Yep. But I realised at this point, and I've been back through and I'm pretty certain about this, Every book and magazine that we encounter in this film is flipped backwards rather than forwards. The pages right. are backwards rather than forward. This film doesn't know how to read. I'm pretty I, certain I, about I, that. I, point. I, I think you're right, and I think I can back that up, right? Because at, at this point, what we're looking at, like the guy, uh, what's his name, Paul, is saying, like, you know, I bought all of these books about astrology, and then we cut to two books and three magazines with big <laughs> pictures in them, and that, yeah. I guess, is to them all these books. <laughs> And he comes, he does bring up this analogy as well. He said, I began oh. to realize it was like the teacup, worshiping the teapot because the teapot was filling it up. But the teapot, well, the teacup wasn't seeing the hand that was holding the teapot. And I thought this metaphor is both confusing and embarrassingly British. <laughs> and it's aching. You know, it, it's as if he said, it's as if he said, I mean, I began to realize it was like apologizing for binge drinking in the queue in bad weather because your upper lip was stiff, but your teeth weren't straight. <laughs> it's that level of British analogy. Also, the teacup shouldn't be worshipping the hand either, dude. Your analogy is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this makes no fun. What about the brain that moves? Oh, fuck. That, that screws me right up. <laughs> oh, damn it. Now I'm into crystals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now it's time for us to meet Judith Dawson's skeleton. Or as I call her, the turtle from Finding Nemo, if she wanted to speak to a manager. <laughs> <laughs> and she's listed, by the way, as a, a child abuse consultant. And I'm sure that's a, a noble profession, but it sounds like the person that you would call to see how big a stick you can get away with, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely sounds like it's offering tips and techniques. What if he doesn't wake up in ex What if it's exactly forty eight hours when he wakes up? Is what I want to know. <laughs> but here's the thing: fun fact about how noble Judith Dawson's profession is, or how she uh, how she does it. 
As this film was being made, uh, Judith Dawson was leading a team that wrongly accused two nursery workers of child abuse and who a, a judge later said of her team that they maliciously and deliberately misrepresented the evidence to do so and they got fined £2 million uh, wow. in compensation towards those workers. Obviously, Judith didn't pay a penny of that. It was the council right. that employed her who had to pay it. But that is the uh, level of nobility and professionalism that Judith Dawson was employing at the time. Wow. Yeah, no, and yes. she was practicing up on the maliciously misrepresenting the evidence too, right? Right here in this very film. Oh, uh, yeah. Because she starts talking about, she's like, uh, you know, we see all kinds of abuse and uh, sexual abuse of kids. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's pretty fucked up. And she's like, also, satanic rituals, that's real. Those are real. I'm yep. like, oh, no, not, not now. Don't. <laughs> Here's my favorite thing she says. She says, as you probably know, Jesus said, don't touch a hair on this kid's head. Satanists believe the opposite. And I was like, so touch all the hair on that kid's head? Yeah, I had exactly the same thing. And I said, I think there must be a lot of satanic hairdressers. And I said, oh, shit, we learned that earlier in the film. It all makes sense. Oh, shit, it it came full circle. I I just want to point out how much less concerned the Christians became with sexually abusing kids ritualistically when it turned out it was their guys doing it. Right? Like, isn't it strange? (laughs) That was such a hobby horse for them back in the 80s and 90s. Not so much anymore. Mm. But yeah, so then we talk about the obsession that Satanists have with combing baby hair, apparently. What (laughs) the fuck did she think she meant? So now, so we we actually have come full circle uh, because this movie had heard, like vaguely was aware of the idea of opening and closing on, you know, parentheses or whatever. But what they came away with was that the first and last scene of your movie should be the exact same clip. <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm 90% sure this film loops like Pulp Fiction. And it's, <laughs> it's just still going on for so, yeah. forever somewhere. <laughs> Although there was a clip from uh, Logan, uh, Kevin Logan, who we see again that we saw at the start. There's a clip that, I, a, a line from him that I missed the first time around, where he said, once you start on that path, it's a very slippery slope that en- ends in disaster. And I thought, ah, oh, someone's been listening to the uh, citation needed back catalogs. I'm pretty sure very <laughs> slippery slope that ends in disaster featured heavily there. Yeah, that is kind of one of our major themes. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> so he ends reminding us that Ouija boards will disintegrate your personality mm-hmm. <laughs> and tells us not to be a Satanist. The end. By the way, if you're having trouble with Satanism, they have some numbers you can call. Way too many numbers. It's a British number, so it's just it's a 74-digit number. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. That's it for the movie itself. That it, it was a pretty short one, but we have a little something extra for you because Marsh did a little snooping, uh, as he said. He looked around online to see what he could find, and he came up with the study guide that goes with this film. Yes, apparently, along with the film, they distributed a little thing about, like, how to lead a discussion about it afterwards. <laughs> so before we wrap things up, I want to go through the 10 discussion questions that they offer. All right. Number one, there may be many reasons why occult practices appear to work. Hoax, sleight of hand, psychological power in the group, or through demonic forces. <laughs> what explanation do you think is most likely? Oh, most likely. Uh, it's uh, definitely sleight of hand. Greatest trick the devil ever pulled was the cups and ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. It's all just standard magic techniques. Uh, a lot of people don't realize every demon is actually a set of identical twins. And that's well, how it is. Yes. <laughs> you just ruined the ending, but okay, fine. <laughs> all right. Number two. Do you think you could ever be influenced by outside forces? Ah, oh, I gotta go buy a Pepsi. <laughs> yeah, but is it, this movie's an outside force. As is this PDF, you idiots. Anyway, um, th- there's sub questions on this one. Ask yourself these questions: A, have you ever read your horoscope and taken it seriously? Yes, because astrology is true. <laughs> B, have you played a Ouija board? What effect did it have on you? Oh, okay. So this is a true story. I played with a Ouija board alone as a child, and because nobody was there to like nudge it and there was no one there to make me play along or any of that stuff, nothing happened. And I was convinced ghosts didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's heartbreaking. Isn't You're picturing it? just sad, fat baby Eli sitting alone in his room being like, come on, ghosts. Okay, that's so, what happened. Uh, grandma, grandma surely is still not disappointed <laughs> with me. Come on, grandma. <laughs> 
And so, my, so my experience, my buddy had one, and so we played with it, but I didn't play along. I didn't push along with him, so nothing happened, and he would just push it in circles around my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, C. If someone told you they could put you in touch with a person who had died, would you take them up on it? Eh, I'm worried Dad might ask what I've been up to, and yeah. I don't really want to. <laughs> like it's going to depend on the person. Eli might just dig somebody up. So. <laughs> I'm going to admit it. I came alive at this one because, yeah, absolutely, I would. Uh, I would absolutely take them up on it. In fact, I genuinely spent last weekend seeing a 63 year old Japanese cult leader channel the spirit of the dead Princess Diana. That's how I spent my what? Friday night. Yeah, I went to the headquarters of uh, Happy Science. Uh, you guys have covered oh! a Happy Science film. Oh, oh! I went to see the Happy Science uh, seance with uh, Princess Diana. Oh, did he do the accent? It was amazing. So it turned out, which I did find out in advance, luckily, that it wasn't actually him there. They were just showing a film of him doing it without oh. telling you that it was a film to do oh, it. Oh, really? Um, but oh, it was amazing. They asked him uh, as Diana uh, about all, all various different uh, you know things. And one of the things they asked him about was, like, so have you got a message for uh, William and Harry? And I don't think he knew who those were because he sort of went, uh, William? Harry? Um, I'm not sure. And it's like, yeah, I'm surprised Diana's forgotten her sons that quickly. You know? yeah. It's funny how quick the spirits move on when they're from the opposite yeah, side true. of the world and haven't done the research properly. Amazing. All right, wait, there's more. Three, do you think there are any dangers in dabbling in the occult? A uh, really silly book collection. <laughs> you could burn yourself lighting too many candles. Or get a little blister from the lighter, yeah. Also... <laughs> Uh, future potential employers might see that video you were in from the 90s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, number four. Several people spoke of their experiences. Did any of them surprise you? I feel like you have to care to be surprised. <laughs> I, I didn't see the scene with a semi-Australian lesbian come in. That was an <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet the guy who wasn't even surprised by any of those stories. <laughs> All right, number five. Um, have you formed a worldview yet? <laughs> That's a terrifying goddamn question. <laughs> and then it asks us uh, how we would answer the six questions that were put to An Andrea, the girl on the backhoe. Yeah, I I'd probably answer them while dangling off the back of a combine harvester. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what I would do. <laughs> All right. Uh, question six has a bunch of homework. Uh, how do the devil and Christ differ in their approach to man? See John 1, 1 through 18, John 8, 12, John 1, 29 through 34, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Philippians 2, 6, Matthew 13, 19, John 5, 20, Luke 4, 22, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, Matthew 4, 1 through 11, 1 Peter 3, 18 through 22. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait. This is my favorite question on the list. Number seven. Although demon activity has cropped up in every age to a lesser or greater degree, why did the world of demons so strongly reveal itself during the ministry of Christ? Ooh, because there weren't cameras yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's because Christ escalated the fight by being so efficient uh, and brilliant at fighting evil that it's a, it's a bit like at the end of Batman Begins where they blame the Joker on how good Batman was. The <laughs> right, no, you're game. right. Okay, all right. I think that's honestly the answer they were going for. <laughs> There's the, somebody who from this project is listening. They're like, all right, we're getting through, y'all. It is like Batman. <laughs> Jesus is just like Batman. All right, number eight. <laughs> this is not a question. This is what it says. I copied and pasted this, guys. I didn't rewrite it. Eight. Some reasons for steering clear of occultism. Cultism? Question mark. Uh, uh, goth girls take even longer to get ready. How oh, that's that? a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I had uh, the smell of joysticks makes me very angry and enraged. Uh, I become incensed. Oh, shit. How dare you? Shit, tits. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Nine is my favorite question. Nine is the best. <laughs> Again, I am going to read this to you exactly how, the, how they have it written. Nine, can you think of two reasons why getting involved with the occult is similar to walking into a radioactive area? A, that which can harm you is invisible. B, the harmful effects may not show up immediately. Did... Did you answer your own question? I think they did. <laughs> <In your head. laughs> All I had was uh, that astrology and radiation, they both make you more likely to be exposed to cancer. 
And that's as close <laughs> as we get to on anything to this. Well done, sir. Well done. All right. And finally, number 10. How can people be set free from the bad effects they have experienced through spiritism, fortune telling, etc.? Note especially the sections with Eddie Vass and Paul Benison. Why did it work? Uh, in my experience, they can start an atheism podcast. <laughs> oh, ooh, that would also be a good answer of the uh, to, for the reasons to steer clear of occultism question. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I think in terms of setting people free, I think they could realize that it's just all not real and then stop listening to scaremongers like Eddie Vass and Paul Benison. And that would probably do a decent job of setting them free. Well said, sir. As a matter of fact, I think that's the note I want to end on. So that's going to do it for our review of Doorways to Danger. Not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to try this again and expect different results next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, of course, next week should be the last week of our Halloween spooktacular. But every so often, something <laughs> so beautiful comes along. <laughs> a one night fathom event so <laughs> tremendous that you are currently the sole owner of the ticket to the theater it is playing in, in New Jersey. <laughs> That's right. It's Kevin Sorbo versus Antifa in The Reliance. Oh my God. Like we got 7,000 texts and messages and shit about this when, when, when they announced that this was coming out. Yes, we are going to go I'm going to drive an hour and 40 fucking minutes to the nearest theater, <laughs> to the theater near me that's playing this for its one night Thursday debut, <laughs> which will not carry on over till Friday. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 218 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Marsh for hanging out with us today. And a reminder that you can hear more from him by following the link in the show notes. Hey, Marsh, thanks for being on the show. I forgot to add that in my outro thing. Thanks. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure, guys. I really enjoyed seeing this glimpse of my history. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, an also huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you want to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving a five-star review anywhere you can and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scathing atheist citation needed and the skeptocrat available wherever podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of p andrew torres tim robertson takes care of our social media our theme song was written and performed by ryan slotnik of evil drafts on mars all of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer morgan clark and was used with permission thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week for heath and right neil bosnick i'm no illusions promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week until then We'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The theme song went on to play on a loop in Marsha's head until the day he died. <laughs> Do you know your birth side? Do you follow <laughs> the stars? <laughs> Noah, Heath, and Eli did eventually all appear on this show again in the same week, I promise. <laughs> if I'm still the only person with a ticket to the Reliant on Thursday... I'm watching it naked. <laughs> <laughs>we could spend the like we could basically make a full length episode of this just by spending some time on the physical appearances of heartbeat. Um, <laughs> I actually have that in my notes that you like to spend an entire episode on yep. just those eight people. <laughs> the Patreon edition that's just me really getting into our yeah. <laughs> Pretty spot on accent there, huh, Marsh? That was beautiful. Like, like, for a second I thought you'd left the room and a genuine headmaster would come in. <laughs> I was nervous about doing myself as a kid, but yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Does Billy like <laughs> oh, shit. this killed me when I first read through it. I was like, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna be a pro about this here. <laughs> here we go. All right. <laughs> oh, this 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 is such a cruel uh cruel ad for both of us, Marsh, because I have the worst teeth in all of podcasting, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a dig at both of us i think i haven't fully read this ad copy so we'll see where this goes oh okay all right well in that case yeah just roll with it <laughs> all right add one the preceding podcast was a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2019 all rights reserved